<laughs> All right. So Nick, appreciate you coming on. What's uh what's going on in Charlotte? How's everything been? Man, Charlotte is amazing. Um, we've been doing training camp for the past two weeks. Yes, the day before, well, yesterday actually, we just finished up our first game. Um, played Toronto. It was actually a really good game. I think we're off to a good start as a team. You know, building our offense and our defense, just trying to figure stuff out along the way. Great. Uh, how was it playing in your first NBA game? Obviously, it wasn't a you know regular season game, but preseason, you know. Still a still a big moment. Yeah, uh, it was actually a dream come true, even though I only played uh, 10, like 7, 10 minutes. Um, just, you know, step on the court and actually play against, you know, guys like Pascal Siakam and um, Kyle Lowry wasn't there. But, you know, just to step on the NBA court, even though there were no fans, it was still a dream come true. Yeah, no, I mean, especially for you, uh, you know, it's been a it's been a long road and a lot of people doubted you, but, you know, continue to work and develop. And I think you're, you know, the start of a very long and prosperous NBA career. Uh, what's it like? What's it like living in Charlotte? Obviously, that's a new place for you. Um, I think my team's off the right start. Um, you know, they've been really good to, to the rookies, you know, helping us develop and learn as fast as possible. Um, but, you know, training camp has been really good. Um, Begin to know the veterans really well. Begin to know the the guys on the team pretty well. So I think it's off to a good start so far. Speaking of training camp and uh, rookies and vets, you have a few different uh, Kentucky guys in the Charlotte locker room. Uh, obviously, PJ, who's one of the mainstays of uh, the Charlotte franchise now after a great rookie year, and Khalil's there with you too. So what's it been like, uh, you know, having a little bit of a UK connection uh, in the locker room? I mean, it definitely makes it a lot easier. But uh, Malik Monk is also there. Uh, oh, yeah. How could I forget Malik? Yeah. You know, it's definitely been easier. Um, you know, those guys have helped me, you know, try to pick up on the game as fast as possible. Um, even yesterday, you know, I, I thought that I didn't really have that good of a game, but they all, you know, were supporting me and told me, like, we have a long season. It's only preseason. Don't even worry about it. Uh, so I think it's, I think, you know, the Kentucky guys have been very supportive for, you know, every single, every single one of us. Yeah, I think it'd actually be pretty tough to find an NBA team that doesn't have at least, you know, one or two Kentucky guys on it to help, uh, to help guys out. But, but New York got like nine of them on the team right now. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much that had to do with uh, Kenny Payne. Speaking of Kenny Payne, uh, and, you know, UK, how much are you missing your old, uh, your old stomping grounds? Um, well, when I came for the game, I was kind of sad that I wasn't able to go back into the locker room. Well, of course, you know, if, you know COVID, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You got you to understand that it's not more times right now and everybody had to take the precautions and do what they had to do. But just to be back in Rupp was a great feeling. You know, a lot of memories, that, a lot of good memories. A lot of bad memories, a lot of memories that, you know, will stay with me forever have taken place in that building. Yeah, I think maybe my uh, best memory of the season so far was uh, when I saw you in the crowd against Moorhead and I had no idea you were going to be there and just running over and daffing you up before the game. That was, uh, that was pretty fun for me. Yeah. You know, to get to see one of my idols in person, uh, you know, after, after such a long time. Probably shut up, bro. <laughs> Uh, but you guys have been, uh, you know, going with training camp for a couple weeks now. Uh, what's the adjustment been like going from, you know, college practices, college games, and now, you know, going through an NBA training camp and then starting to play some games? Well, for one, the game, the game is definitely faster. Um, guys, are, you think that you're in college or, you know, Bigger, stronger, faster guy, you know, they always, they always seem to stand out the most. Well, you now you have 400 other guys in the, in the same league as you that are the same way. And you got to figure out a way to stand out just the same way you did in college. Um, but for overall training camp, I feel like training camp has been good to everybody. You know, we're going in two days every day, get on the court, 
you still gotta find time to get on the court and do whatever you gotta do to stay to stay in rhythm with yourself. But I feel like um, I think that we're off to a good start right now. And going back even before training camp, you were uh, in Lexington for most of kind of you know the post post you know March Madness being canceled. You know for a lot of the quarantining period. Uh, what was your training yeah. like, and uh, you know how was it preparing for the draft in such uncertain times? Well, for the for the, like for the first two months, I really didn't do anything. Um, I was really just in the house, just doing you know home workouts, just like everybody else, just mm-hmm. trying to keep my body in the best shape as possible. And I think that after two months, when everything starts to open back up, just a little bit, but not really. Um, being just, Joe Justice, you know, we got into a little gym right by the mall and we started to work out there a lot. Um, then I started to go to the weight room in the, I started to go to Proof, which is a, a it's like a, it's like a, it's like a LA fitness in, in some type of way, you know, a lot of weights, um, got their own little, little track that you can run around. But I didn't really start preparing for the NBA until I got to New York. Um, when, did you get to New York? I was hmm? when did you get to New York? In July, I think. I was there for about four months, four or five months. You were working out at the uh, NBPA's facility, right? Quite a bit? Yeah, I was there almost every day. Um, so literally, since I got to New York today, I landed the next day. Uh, it's been two days, no, actually three days, two times on the court and one time in the weight room for five months straight. And I feel like that little span of time, you know, really helped my game go off to the, take another, take another leap because I feel like I needed, to, I actually needed that time to improve my game. Uh, speaking of, you know, improving your game, have you stretched your range to uh, the NBA three-point line? Definitely. See, see, this is what it is, man. I just got I didn't shoot threes in college. I mean, I can't. And you know, I was, you know, I was a better three point shooter than a lot of guys that were taking threes. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think that's one of the. I definitely think that's the biggest thing that surprised me when I became your teammate was was your ability to shoot. Uh, you know, five minute shooting, different drills, working with you. You know, there was no doubt in my mind you were legitimately a very good seventeen foot jump shooter. Uh, when you backed it up to the three-point line, which you honestly didn't even do very much in workouts because you just knew, you know, yeah. that really wasn't – I think the only time you shot a three last year was the blue-white game when you would dribble it up and shoot it from half court. <laughs> uh, no, that's what I always thought, would always tell people. I was like, I think Nick can stretch his range out, you know, become a 40% NBA three-point shooter. So, uh, you better not screw me over with that and make me look good. Be fine with that. You... Uh, I even go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you say? No. Uh, now, kind of shifting to draft night. What was it like? You know, going through the draft process and then hearing your name called. You know, putting on the hat, all that type of stuff. Uh, the whole entire draft process was a bit weird. Um. Obviously, it was very exciting, you know, just just to hear my name get called. But the whole entire draft process was really just weird because, you know, it's not really it's not really what you thought it was going to be, you know, grow, growing up and seeing everything. You thought you were going to actually, you know, go through the whole entire process, go be in the Barclays Center, go to New York, do all the stuff that you got to do leading up to the draft. And it's, it wasn't the same. I'm so grateful that the NBA, you know, they tried to make it the same make it as close to the same as possible but you know it's it's still it's still like a great moment just hearing your name call and saying that a team actually picked you and then you can actually you actually made a team and a team is wants to invest in you for the for the next couple years yeah no i mean when i heard uh like when i heard your name get called when i heard quick's name get called tyrese you know seeing nate sign Ash and sign EJ, you know, it was hard for me not to get, uh, you know, emotional. I was just so happy for all you guys and all the work you put in and just what good people you are. And especially you who, uh, you know, had a little bit longer path than some of the other guys that have come through UK, but I think 
have positioned yourself to have just as good of a, you know, NBA career as anyone. And so I was really, and I just know what an awesome person you are, one of my best friends. So I was, you know, it's hard not to get excited. You know, when your friend becomes a millionaire, you know. I'm not a millionaire either. I am definitely not a millionaire. I would look up his uh, salary on uh, Hoops Hype if you believe that. And, you know. <laughs> Nick, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I interrupted his movie night for him to do this. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a great friend right there. Yeah, uh, okay. Whatever, man. <laughs> Nick, any last words you'd like to say to, uh, you know, the people of your former, former university? Nah, man, I think that's it. I think, yeah. Y'all saw the work. Y'all saw the past three years of my life. So I think y'all, y'all good. <laughs> Fair enough, Nick. You're the best. We love you and good luck this season. Appreciate it. Uh, how's training camp going? Oh, uh, it's been going good, man. It's it's good. I mean, I've been up here, got to practice like live two or three times. And uh, it's been great, man. It's cool just, you know, meeting all these guys and, you know, actually, you know, you see them on TV and actually playing with them and getting to talk to them. It's really fun. I mean, I've had a great time. Yeah, even before we start with the Sixers, let's talk about the pre-draft process where you were, uh, you know, working out in L.A. And we always saw different pictures of you with, you know, LeBron, Ben Simmons, Anthony Davis. It seemed like it was a who's who of the NBA at your workouts. So uh, what was it like having those uh, I mean, it's great. I mean, to have guys like that as older brothers, um, a lot of people don't know, like I said, like I've been telling that, you know, people lately that I worked out with Rajon Rondo before the bubble. You know, that that's how long I was in L.A. And, you know, we was getting up and working out at 6 a.m. every single day, at least before he left. And, I mean, you know, ha having guys like that who already know, who already uh, are established in the league, you know, coming in as a rookie, it really helps to have those guys in your corner and someone to talk to and, like I said, someone to help give you the ropes. Yeah, and especially another Kentucky alumni who, uh, you know, has had a very successful career. I mean, kind of, you know, he stepped in the NBA in a very similar position to you where, right. uh, you know, as a rookie, he was part of, you know, a Celtics team that was competing for championships. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, also playing for Doc Rivers. And I think those mm -hmm. are, you know, the same aspirations you guys have, have this year with the Sixers. Right, and he also went 21st, just like me. He called me the same that that night, saying that's so crazy that you know y'all we went the same pick, same coach, and like in almost in the same situation. Yeah. No. Speaking of draft night, uh, I was so happy for you guys when I like I'm not I got really emotional when I saw you, Quick, Emmanuel, and then you know I saw Ashton sign his deal with Minnesota and Nate get with Brooklyn and EJ with Milwaukee. Uh, what was it like? Obviously, not a normal year for the draft. You didn't go to the you didn't go to the green room. You didn't get a shake. Uh, Adam Silver's hand, but how was it being with your family and hearing your name get called? Yeah, it, it was amazing, man. The thing that I tell people is like, um, this this was our first time going through it, so it's not like we can say we experienced, mm -hmm. you know, the green room and you know shaking Adam Silver's hand. So like, we we don't know that. We only mm -hmm. saw that on TV. What we know is how the draft process was this year. So like, in my opinion, it was it was great, man. It was amazing feeling to get drafted. You know, it was even better that, you know, my family could be there with me. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. And, I, you know, I, like I told the, uh, you know, the general manager, Daryl Morey, and you know, Coach Rivers and everybody in the Sixers organization that I really appreciate, you know, the opportunity. Yeah, speaking of Coach Rivers, as you know, my dad worked for him for the past, uh, I think, four years uh, with L.A. What's it been like getting to know him? Uh, you know, knowing him around the NBA is a great coach, really good guy. You know, every uh, interaction I've had with him has been, you know, he's just one of the one of the nicest people you'll meet. So, how's it been playing for him so far? Oh, it's been great. It's been great. You know, he's a, like you said, a great guy. You know, very intelligent. Knows the X's and O's. Knows how to um, manage a team. Knows how to to talk to the players. And, and you know, able to get the best out of them. You know, what I'm saying he's a players' coach in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And he does it. Like he's found his niche, and he knows he knows how to get the best out of guys. And that's going to be very helpful for myself and the team. What's it been like having superstar teammates, you know, already coming, you know, growing up, you're always a top 10 recruit and you came to UK, you know, yeah. heavy load was placed on you. Now, not that they don't expect you to produce and be a high level player, right. but it's a little bit different. What's that mm -hmm. adjustment kind of been like having, you know, Joel and Ben 
uh, as teammates. Like you said, it is different, and, and you have to adjust to the situation that you're in. And you know, it's funny. I was on, uh, you know, you know, on their team today, and, and it's just, it, it's just so like almost surreal. Like the things that you know, Joel is able to do with the basketball at his size is like, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's just. It's a cheat code. I mean, he gets the ball inside. He's going to score. He's going to get fouled. He's going to line. And then, you know, he's knocking down jump shots, you know, handling the ball. Then you got Ben Simmons at 6'10", you know, sprinting up the court, defending. Like, I don't think – like, he's an underrated defender. I know he made – I think he made, you know, first team or, or the defensive mm-hmm. team this year. But he, he's, like, a, a actually really great defender, moving his feet, being active, getting still, sprinting back on defense and transition, like – you know, you don't see that from guys like, you know, mm-hmm. of his caliber. Just he's a, he's a competitor. And, you know, it's great playing with those guys. But, you know, I feel like, you know, we all have our own roles on the team. And, and you know, that's what you have to do. You have to go out there and be a superstar in your role. And, and, you know, that's what I plan on doing. No, and I think that's very important, especially as a rookie. You're presenting with such a great opportunity to, you know, have a meaningful role on a team that's expected to, you know, fight for Eastern Conference title, NBA title kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, the position Shea came into in a little bit different way. You know, Shea yep. stepped right in as a rookie with the Clippers and was asked to start, you know, on a team that went to the playoffs. Didn't have quite the same title aspirations you guys have, but, you know, was came, came into the NBA and was asked to play a major role from day one. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's very similar. It's a, it's a very similar situation. And, and, and I'm, I'm excited and I'm happy that, you know, I got drafted to the Sixers just because, you know, the culture here is amazing. And like you said, uh, we have the potential to win. And, you know, that's what basketball is all about. And that's how I play the game is to win. So at the end of the day, you know, it's still a competition. And that's why I'm glad I'm here. Speaking of competition, how how do you feel now watching UK as a fan, as opposed to, like, obviously, when you were a recruit, seeing, a, seeing that as a place you were about to play at in the last year, in the middle of it? And how much do you wish we would have gotten to make uh, – NCAA tournament run last season? I mean, I think that NCAA tournament, we'll start with that. The NCAA tournament run, it, it, it kind of hurt just knowing, like, all the work that we put in and how much we got better and, like, how everybody knew exactly what they had to do, you know what I'm saying, what they needed to do to win. And, like, guys coming along, like Johnny and KB and, you know, EJ was kind of knowing what he needed to do. Quick was, you know, doing what he had been doing all year. and you know, it, it kind of hurt just because, like, you you know, you were there. We You you was running those 15s with us. You ran those 600s outside. Like, you know, once you prepare like that and, you you know, you're at the all-time high of your of your team, like you've maximized your potential. You know that you've been getting better every single day, you know, throughout the entire year, and now you're about to make this push. And, and for all that to get stopped abruptly, it, it kind of hurt, you know, just knowing that we, we don't know what would have happened. We can't – we have no idea what would have happened, you know, on that run. We could have went to the final, I mean, to the, you know, the championship game. And, you know, who knows? Who knows? You know, the rest will be history. But, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, it, it needed to happen. Yeah, no, I just remember uh, last season, we had obviously had some highs, you know, beating Michigan State. Your collegiate debut went off, you know, got a little love from Drake. And then about a week <laughs> later, you know, losing to right. Mill at home as the number one ranked team in the country. You know, then mm-hmm. picked it back up. Then right before Christmas, another couple, another couple tough losses to Utah and Ohio mm-hmm. State. But then, mm-hmm. I don't know if it was apparent to people on the outside, but to me, and I think the rest of the guys on the team, just how much we had it figured out and how much we had it rolling, I felt by the mm-hmm. end of the year. Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't watch as much college basketball as I had in the past, but I – I really couldn't imagine there being a team who was uh, more ready to make a run during the NCAA tournament than we were. I agree. Like everybody, like I said, everybody on our team knew their role. They knew what had to happen for us to win the game. We knew how we had to play. We knew how we had to defend. And when you have that, when you have, and then the, the chemistry was like this. We all mm-hmm. like were close with each other. That's what I was telling um, KB the other day. Like. I can't – I don't know anybody on the team that I was like, man, I, I never really talked to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, now that I look back on it, like, throughout the year, I talked to everybody. You mm-hmm. know, I was telling my mom and dad that the other day as well. Like, you know, we 
we were all like one unit. It's not like we had clicks, you know, or yeah. anything like that. We all we all were friends. We all were, you know, teammates, and we, you know, we all had that camaraderie. And you know, it, it just, it like I said, it hurts. Yeah, no, that was such a fun team. Just the, you know, dinners at Cheesecake, the <laughs> <laughs> the rides back from Cheesecake, the food fights. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I haven't had cheesecake since that day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had it, we had it quite a bit during the season, so might need a little break. Uh, but I'll let you go here soon. Last question I'll ask is, uh, who's been the biggest influence on you going into your rookie season? Like, who are you, who have you looked to to kind of like guide you and give you some advice going into what's going to be, you know, unprecedented and really, you know, no one knows what it's going to look like for your rookie year. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I have great vets on this team. So, like, you know, I, I'm locker mates with, with Seth Curry and Tobias Harris. Like, imagine – you know, a rookie coming in with those two guys who you can talk to at all times. Like, Tobias Harris is, is a, you know, he's really been on me as I've been playing and, and really helping me and, you know, telling me how he feels like I should, you know, I can help this team. And, you know, it's very much appreciative to have someone like that in your corner. And then, of course, Ben, just because, you know, Clutch and, and I've known him, seen him in L.A. And, and different things like that. He's also helped, all, helped a lot. But I think mainly, you know, having Rajon Rondo, having that time with him, you know, a guy like Rondo, a vet like Rondo, a two-time champ like Roger Rondo, you know, having him in your corner, being able to call him whenever, you know, I think it's really going to help me, you know, in this long run. I completely agree. That's a, you know, great group of guys. My dad coached Tobias in L.A., and Tobias is one of the hardest working, most intelligent guys you'll find in the mm -hmm. NBA. Is he still always reading the book? Reading the books? Yeah. I haven't seen him read books. We're about to go on a road trip this week, so I don't know. We'll, I guess we'll see, but – you know, he, he – Tobias is funny, though. He is definitely funny. Yeah, good guy. Well, Reese, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, how, uh, you know, excited BBN is going to be to hear from you. Uh, we all wish you the best your rookie year. It's so – I appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that. But it's so ironic that I wore this shirt, shirt to the facility, and, you know, after, I mean, after I got the shower and everything today. So, like, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to wear it, you know. Might as well keep wearing it while I you know, get on Zoom. So yeah, it worked out well. Reese, I appreciate you, brother. All right, my man. You be safe. You as well. Tell your family I said hello. All right, we'll do.